it's not a new fight to me. The brutalities and the atrocities that I've witnessed take place here is nothing new to me. I've already been exposed to this level of wild demon, inhumane form of treatment of in Iran. people, of my people in Iran at the hands of the Islamic Republic. Yes, there are people denying the atrocities of October 7th. There are people who are not willing to look for all the clues that are in front of them. We warned the international community about the atrocities that are yet to fall upon Israel at the hands of the Islamic Republic if we do not stop them now. Shalom lekulam. אנחנו פה בריאיון מיוחד עם הלהט ג'מאלי, המכונה לילימו, פעילת זכויות אדם איראנית גולה. היא נמצאת פה בישראל בימים אלה כדי להביע הזדהות איתנו. אנחנו הולכים לדבר איתה, המלחמה כמובן, על משטר האייתולות, המוות המרעיד של ראיסי ועל כל מה שבאמצע. Thank you for, for having us, לילימו. Thank you, thank you for having me here with you, Roy. It's an honor. First of all, לילי, I want to ask you if you can introduce yourself. Absolutely. And what are you doing in Israel these days? I'm fighting the fight that the rest of the world should also be calling out for and fighting. We have a bat battalion of women from across Europe, very powerful women here on a delegation invited by Elnet Europe, an uh, incredible delegation in support of Israel and fighting against anti-Semitism. And the main purpose of this very trip was to fight against rape as a weapon of war and weaponization of women against themselves, uh, the body of the woman against themselves. I have come to bear witness and tell the world what is happening here. But this is not my first time. It's not your first time. It's not my first time. When was your first time? I came initially um, invited as part of an Iranian delegation. It was the first of its kind. It's So far, it's been the only one of um, Iranians from the diaspora fighting against the Islamic Republic coming into Israel to bear witness and also many of us, well all of us have been standing with Israel since day one too. I want to ask you, you know, I am sure you saw the, the movie, the horrific movie of the female soldiers who were kidnapped in this brutal attack of uh, Hamas in 7 October. How do you feel when you see, you, you came here to talk against the rape and... Absolutely. The thing is what I'm fighting for right now, I'm fighting against, it's not a new fight to me. The brutalities and the atrocities that I've witnessed take place here is nothing new to me. I've already been exposed to this level of wild demon, inhumane form of treatment of in Iran. people, of my people in Iran at the hands of the Islamic Republic, yes. In November of 2019, the Islamic Republic took it upon itself to rape, mutilate and murder men, women and children in the streets of Iran and then dumping their bodies into the gutter. There was an international tribunal held for this in London. Um, on the 31st of September of 2022. During this time, Raisi the deceased was in the UN in New York and he was the number one perpetrator of all of those atrocities that were being named and recognized internationally by an international body was still given diplomatic visa and impunity to go on a trip into the UN after killing Masa Amini while he was wanted in a court. The so butcher of Tehran. The butcher of Tehran. Masa Amini simply existed as a woman and she was killed. She wasn't resisting, she wasn't trying, she wasn't holding a paper, she wasn't pulling her scarf out. She was walking with her brother. People started cutting their hair around Europe, around America handing out other accolades to us Iranian women fighting for freedom. We are fighting for freedom in order to get change, not to get accolades. Just hearing about the atrocities that the Islamic Republic committed against three and a half thousand Iranians in a space of three days. 1,700 almost civilians were murdered at the hands of Hamas in one day here. 
in the exact same manner. There are people denying the atrocities of October 7th. There are people who are not willing to look for all the clues that are in front of them. There are people who have continuously ignored the plea of Iranians and the fact that all of these atrocities have been out there, reported into the international media, fallen on deaf ears or indifferent lobbyists for the Islamic Republic. For 365 days, Iranians across the diaspora and inside of Iran, including myself, out in Europe, we warned the international community about the atrocities that are yet to fall upon Israel at the hands of the Islamic Republic if we do not stop them now. The reason for this was because the Islamic Republic has been on its last leg for a very long time. It's on a very, very shaky ground at the moment. Every time the Islamic Republic feels cornered, they attack Iranians. They attack the civilians of Iran. They rape and plimage our people. They open fire on the houses of people in poorer cities. And then they put up all these crazy rhetorics about, oh, if uh, different cities are uprising, it's because they're uprising against each other. They want to separate Iran from in its, within itself. No. Iran is in every way united within its integrity, historical integrity, its geographical integrity, and its national integrity. You, you mentioned the President Raisi and, and his death. The and, butcher. Uh, the butcher uh, Thank in you. this incident, the helicopter incident with the Iranian officials. The glorious incident, the, the joyous incident. Tell me the truth, Lily. The people of Iran, are they happy after the death of Raisi or they are sad? I was just <laughs> rejoiced with new hope. New hope for Iran because this shadow of death is now lifted. As much as the, the ones who've been keeping that umbrella, holding the shadow of, uh, of death all over the fate of Iranians, those who've been holding the umbrella are still around, but their hands are going to be cut off soon. They're also going to meet their doom soon. And the people of Iran are going to be there to celebrate those two. You speak about Ali Khamenei. Absolutely. It's like as if he is the definition of Zahag. In the Shahnameh of Ferdowsi, there is a character who is so evil, who took Iran hostage, who took Persia hostage. And in order to stay alive, he had two snakes on his shoulders and he had to feed the, the brain of two young men every night to these snakes in order to stay alive. And that is Khamenei. That's his, that's his identity. That's his entire existence. And Zahak even died. I wonder, you know, you spoke about uh, the West and the international community. When you saw the Security Council of UN stand, moment of silence after the death of uh, Raisi. Well, the Security Council is the same council that has failed itself and its position and it has a lot to answer for a lot of uh, things they've done wrong over the past few years, especially since 2022 by first appointing the Islamic Republic as the head of Security Council for Women's Rights after killing Mahsa Amini and raping our girls to death in prisons. To death. After raping our men to death. After setting our children on fire. They have been given an accolade, a position of power, a position of respect in the UN. No, unacceptable. I want to have hope and faith that the UN as an entity can reach reform and will be run by people worthy of the positions. Because currently there are people who are running it who are disrespectfully, disrespectfully giving respect to the murderer and the butcher of Tehran the butcher of Iran, the executioner himself, after two years of woman life freedom, after execution after execution in the past year, in the past seven months alone, using the conflict here that they have created to hide the oppression 
and the devastation they're causing on Iranian people inside of Iran. The international community knows there is one opposition against Khamenei, against the Islamic Republic. One name is being called out time after time after time in Iran. Tell me his name. The Shah. Absolutely. And there are people out there waiting and calling for reform. Mm -hmm. Reform is not possible with the terrorists. There is only one opposition against the Islamic Republic and its entirety supporting the people of Iran because the original number one opposer of the Islamic Republic are the people of Iran who are hostage by, the by this very regime. And they are calling for their king, for their prince, for their royal family to come back home. It's been long enough. How much do you think your voice reflect the people in Iran? When you go to a football stadium, you can't get the supporters of uh, any side chants what they do not want to chant. Organic chants come out of Iran calling out for the return of Reza Shah. Organic chants came out of Iran on October 8th in support of Israel and very much against the PLO flag. So how you explain all the you know, the hate, and all the, what, what we see. Propaganda, the very propaganda that you are witnessing against your country right now in the international scene, that very propaganda is the thing that brought in Khomeini and the Islamic Republic that we are seeing right now. Khomeini and its existence, the entire existence of the Islamic Republic was to come use Iran to destroy Israel and keep the Arab nations in the Middle East in their least progressive way or in the most destructive way. While the Shah was in Iran, who would have dared do this to Israel? With his military, with his connection and bridges with the world? These guys, the second they came in, they put a fatwa on an intellectual. They started assassinated Iranians out on inside of Iran and they blocked every pathway of movement for Iranians and non-Iranians in and out of Iran. Mm -hmm. They isolated Iran, they kidnapped Iran, they held Iran hostage, and they have devastated it all these years. You still have relatives in Iran? A lot of relatives in Iran. All of them are at risk of death because of what I do. That's the tyranny we are facing. Yet here I am standing. 45 years ago, people should have done what I do. They didn't. The ones that did, they got shunned by the intellectuals. BBC kept on promoting Khomeini. CNN kept on promoting Khomeini. There weren't that many news outlets back then in the world. It wasn't like social media right now. The only two tools of propaganda or mass view or campaign, let's say camp positive campaign, only a few sources, reputable sources so-called. Those reputable sources denounced the Shah and announced Khomeini. Why should your country be sacrificed mm -hmm. and my country be sacrificed so that some people that do not understand the reality of the Middle East can feel special talking about it and then give opinions on it and write papers about it and then eventually say, oh, the Shah could have done better by not leaving. Our countries are at risk of so much bloodshed if we do not get rid of the Islamic Republic today and if we do not stop this new emergence of Islamism and fascist Marxism in the West. When you speak about Masa Amini, you think we can compare what happened to her to what happened to the Israeli women in 7 October? Yes, in so many ways. Absolutely, because the first and biggest enemy of the Islamic Republic and their ideology that they're spreading throughout the Middle East and the rest of the world is a free living woman, is a woman existing in her own presence, in her own choice. Mm -hmm. They don't know what her choices are, so they would decide to kill her. They killed Muslim women on October 7th too. 
Nobody's talking about them. What is your impression, you know? You, I heard you were in the South. Today has been an extremely difficult and painful day for me because I went to the Nova Festival and just being there, being in that environment, it reminds me of the rural, natural, sort of countryside places or farm areas near the farms where Iranians hold their underground raves in villas and they try to have something like the Nova Festival and every once in a while even if they have paid every single bribe that they had to, they had to pay in order to know that they're going to be safe in that party a few buses of IRGC and Hezbollah and Basij could pull up any moment. Carnage on those kids who are at that party. If they go to the hospital after those rapes, they could go to prison. Nobody talks about that. The way the Islamic Republic holds people hostage, as well, those who are also their supporters, who are thinking that they're their supporters because they have no dignity left in them. Through either poverty, extreme poverty, or extreme corruption, there is no dignity in that group. There is a tiny bit of hope because dignity can sometimes be taught under the right circumstances. So I'm here uh, as a woman, as part of a woman's delegation, fighting the use of rape as a weapon of war, the use of weaponization of a body as a weapon of war. But Iran is not at war with other countries in a sense that we are, it's a proxy war. Iran is being held hostage by a government, an entity that only, only, only kills women, hates women, promotes violence, promotes sexual violence. It's the emergence of the black and red as the Iranians used to call it during the 1979 movement, riots that took over Iran. It's the emergence of the Marxists with the Islamists. It's propaganda on top of propaganda on top of propaganda. And where you are fighting a war of propaganda with truth, and people are sitting in every single TV station saying, oh, Israel is losing the PR war. Oh, Israel is losing the propaganda war. Please, by all means, you do not need to win propaganda. Mm -hmm. You will rise with truth and only truth. I wonder if you can describe to us the, the life in Iran under this regime, this religious regime. I was born at the end of Iran-Iraq War in 1987. And growing up in Iran under the reign of Rafsanjani, it was horrible. It's like the Soviet Union, but Muslim. Women have to be covered under a black veil and just not exist unless it's for reproduction and labor, as in both labor and house labor. And in spite of all of that hope, from the Islamic Republic, the women of Iran were still active and they were still going to universities, they were still fighting for their existence in the society, they were still working very hard. The regime will not cage you. They will have control over our lives because they have it right now because they're a totalitarian group. And that's being taught to you as a child in Iran. So that's my first interactions with the world. It's that there is two types of lives. The life that's at home, which is how amazing life was before the Islamic Republic, and the life outside, how we pretend we like the Islamic Republic. While the TikTokers in the West are giving up all of their liberties, thinking they're fighting freedom, I wish they would give themselves a moment just to listen to one of the kids from Iran. I do this for them too. It's not, I'm, I'm doing this because West is next. Unless we do something about it, the West is next. You mean what we see in the campus? Absolutely, because the Islamic Republic is in the same academic spaces in the West 
as the schools that are here. From a young age, your syllabuses are written by Oxford and Cambridge in the UK anyway. The other countries, their syllabuses come from the top universities usually, right? Right. There are people who are influencing those mm -hmm. syllabuses. So you go to high school already ready to sympathize with this cause when you go to uni. Already ready to join it, accept it. There are Socialist Party and Communist Party representatives in campuses holding all these things and they constantly... Re to a young European or British kid, this is just some fantasy, kick the up, like, system apart, let's bring about a new change. Yeah. Kind of ideology that's supposed to like just phase because you're in your freedom time before you go and start having a job and really taking care of your real situations in life. What we are seeing unfold is gone past that. It's gone past this like university, this stabilization of the system. It's become university destabilizing the system. It started in the universities in Iran. It started in the universities here now. I wonder if you really think one day you and your family will come back to Iran. Absolutely. I know we are going to go back to a free new Iran, hopefully soon. I only have hope because the people of Iran took action. They gave me this hope. Before Mahsa, I was living my life. And then Mahsa happened. And then my life became Iran and Iran's freedom. In the fight for Iran's freedom, I was calling for your freedom of the Islamic Republic too. Who can say something to the Israeli woman? I believe you. I believe everything you're going through. And I will always echo that. Lily Mu, the Iranian activist, influencer. Not influencer, what, what, no, no. Whatever you want. I'm an Iranian human rights activist who happens Iran to have Instagram. <laughs> I'm not an influencer. Lily Mu, the Iranian activist, thank you very much for having us. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm Israel Chai, Payande Iran. Light will be victorious against the light. Dark, that's the one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.